Today we're going to do a short video on using the tannic acid in conjunction with the iron nitrate to stain a uh, curly maple gun stalk. Uh, the advantage of using the tannic acid is that it can sometimes enhance the figure or um, increase the contrast uh, between uh, the different grain orientations in the curly maple. Um, so it can make in short, it can make the stripes appear bolder and darker. Uh, there is, uh, in my experience, a little bit of a cost in using it in the fact that it um, uh, kind of eliminates some of the nice warm tones that you get from the iron nitrate, and you have to fight a little bit to get those warm tones back. But um, we'll go through a process here and demonstrate the, uh, uh, the use of the tannic acid and see how it turns out. This is a Pretty nice piece of wood. Um, the curl isn't real evident here right now, but it, there's a fair amount of curl in there. Um, so this is a stalk that's scrapped because it has a big defect on the other side. So I've just quickly prepared this. I've not taken as much time as I usually would to prepare a stalk, but um, it'll, I believe, show the show the uh, the point of what we're trying to demonstrate here. So I'm going to put some gloves on. Probably not completely necessary, but it can't hurt. And then the, what we'll do after that is we'll put the solution of tannic acid and water on the stock. So I've mixed up tannic acid in water and I've made a pretty strong solution about all that wanted to dissolve in this little cup. So I'm gonna go get some paper towels I can get any. Okay so I'll just dip it in it and put it on the stock. Okay, so what we'll do now is we'll wait for this to dry. Uh, it'll probably take maybe 15, 20 minutes. And then uh, put a little more on. And then we'll go over it with the iron nitrate. So again, this is tannic acid and we'll follow up with iron nitrate. Can you and mix I've, the tannic acid with anything else like alcohol or just water? Um, I don't know. Okay, um, you just do water? Yeah, I just do water. And I believe the reaction that occurs when you follow up with the iron nitrate is it produces iron tannate, I believe, and it's a very dark, uh, dark compound. I believe they used to make ink. There was an iron tannate ink. Okay, so we'll let that dry. I may try to speed it along with a heat gun. I've never done that before, but I might give that a try to see what it does so we can move on with the video here. Well, we've wait, waited a little bit of time for this to dry and uh, it's looking pretty good. So we're gonna follow it up, like I mentioned previously, with the iron nitrate. This is commonly referred to as just aquafortis. It's uh, nitric acid diluted with water and iron is dissolved in it. And the solution that results is iron nitrate or ferric nitrate. So I'm just gonna put some on a rag and you can put it on the brush or whatever you like. But as I mentioned in a previous video, one important thing is to not put it in the inlets. So, uh, traditionally it was never put in the inlets and it's hard to uh, to get heated completely in the inlets and ends up having more acidity and it can uh, oxidize parts. So I've got a good bit on the rag here. We'll put it on the stock. And you can see it's really kind of immediately turning dark 
which is good. This real kind of dark, nasty look is really what we want. The way this process will work is we let it get as dark as we can. And then we will abrade it back. So the darkness just stays in the, the end grain of the figure. So curly maple has a wavy grain. So what you're seeing is a flat surface intersects the, the grain at different orientations. So some areas are end grain and some are more straight grain. So that's really what curly maple is. So in end grain regions, stain or water or whatever soaks in it much more easily. But in the flat grain regions, it doesn't. So that's, uh, we're gonna take advantage of that with, the, uh, with this process. Okay, so we'll let that dry and hopefully it'll darken even a little more. We may come back and follow up with another coat of the tannic acid. Sometimes that'll even make it darker. So the darker we can get it now, the more contrast there'll be in the, the final product. Okay, a little bit of time has passed, and now I'm gonna follow up with another coat of the tannic acid to try to get even more darkness on the stock. Um, a harder piece of wood will absorb less stain, less tannic acid, and probably end up a little bit lighter. Softer piece of wood will absorb, absorb more of the, the stain in the solution, so it'll probably end up a little darker. Let's try another coat of the tannic acid and see what happens. Hopefully it'll push things just a little darker. And we might even come back with the final coat of iron nitrate. Okay. So we'll let that dry. Follow it up with some iron nitrate. Okay, so I waited for the tannic acid solution to dry and then applied another coat of the iron nitrate and it is more or less dry. So we're gonna go ahead, it's darkened a fair amount. Um, maybe not quite as dark as I was hoping for, but it's not too bad. Um, so we'll probably go ahead now and heat it up and blush it as we ordinarily would do with just the, uh, the iron nitrate. Now, we're probably not going to get a dramatic color change, but we'll see what happens here. You might not get much of a color change at all. I can see a little bit of a change. A little bit of a red coming out. Every piece of wood reacts differently to the iron nitrate and also the tannic acid. So we are getting a little redness, which is kind of kind of nice. But as I mentioned, one of the problems with the I shouldn't say problems, but difficulties with using the tannic acid is you end up with just a very dark finish, or a finish that's not warm. So you have to come back, which I'll demonstrate, and try to do things to increase the, the warm tones in the finish. Or at least that's been my experience anyway.
after this, after I get it heated up a little bit, we're going to take, well, I put some oil on the stock, and then we'll wet sand it back. I've done it both ways. I've done it dry, sanded it back dry without any oil. And it, it works too, but the downside is that it makes a kind of a dust that has this finish mixed with it. And not, not too pleasant. Okay, that's probably about as good as we are going to get, I think. So let me get some oil and some sandpaper and we'll, we'll sand it back and see what happens. So in this case, I'm just going to use some tried and true oil varnish. Mix that with a little bit of turpentine to thin it down. Okay. Let's see what it looks like. It's a uh, linseed oil based product. So as I was saying, it's a linseed oil based product. I think there is a bit of, a little bit of resin added to it. Um, but it's a very traditional finish. and works pretty well. So I'm gonna dilute it with some Turpentine, maybe 50 50 or so. Stir it up. So we can use sandpaper to rub it back with. We can also use, use Scotch Brite, which I'll probably try the Scotch Brite first since it's less aggressive. Do you always use that finish for when you do this as opposed to other finishes? Um, I've probably used other finishes. I, well, I know I have. I think I've used the permalin before. This is a finish that, that um, works pretty well. It, it gives you a, a pretty long open time. It doesn't harden up on you or get tacky. That's one advantage of it. So this is maroon scotch Bright. So I'm going to give it a try, see how it'll work. I'm just going to dip it in the oil. and. See what it, what it does here. So it's kind of dark and nasty looking. And the idea is to rub it back such that the, the straight grain areas, the stain will come out of a lot easier than the the end grain areas. So the end grain areas are the are the stripes that you see, the dark stripes. This is looking promising, so we're gonna get a little more aggressive and start rubbing this back a little harder. Okay. One kind of neat thing about this is you can leave it in some areas to kind of simulate a little bit of Patina. And this is a little warmer than I've uh, I've seen on some the color of it, so it's actually looking pretty nice. I'm encouraged. Basically, I'm throwing it back pretty hard to try to more or less maximize the contrast in the, in the stock. It doesn't look too bad. I'll get a paper towel and wipe it off and take a look and see how, how it's appearing. Not looking too bad. You can see some marks, some machine marks, and so forth. But I didn't take a great deal of care in uh, preparing this stock. 
Okay, so that's a pretty nice color. Um, so it has accentuated the curl some, I believe. And uh, it's a pretty, overall, a pretty nice color, which I'm, I'm surprised and pleased about. Now, sometimes it tends to go much less uh, warm, as I was saying, more just sort of a drab color. And in those cases, I'll come back with some dye stain. Oh, something like uh, Laurel Mountain Forge. Um, I think it's a honey maple or a trans tint uh, amber stain and uh, or honey amber, I believe is what they call it. And that'll tend to warm everything back up. But that's not a bad color there. We will go ahead and add a little bit of add a little bit of uh, maybe trans tint stain mixed with the oil just to see what it does. Give that a try. So here's a little, oh, damn, on my face, is it on my face? Mm -mm. Okay, so this is the trans tint product sold by Woodcraft. This is Honey Amber. So we're gonna take, I'm just gonna put a little bit of the oil on a rag. Okay, that's more than plenty. I'm gonna, I'm gonna just put a little bit of this on the oil. You can also mix this with alcohol. I'm just gonna go about this process here. It sometimes works okay for me. And we're gonna go over the whole thing again. And you can see it's, the oil alone will warm it up, but this, this has done quite a bit to add to the warmth as well. That's not too bad. I think that that would be not too bad. And I think I would just probably, if this were a gun, I'd leave it at this and then adjust the color more as I go. In order to adjust color as I go, I could use the bone black to darken particular areas. Um, and I can also keep adding uh, aniline dyes to the finish and uh, and you'll, you'll kind of adjust the color as finish is, uh, is applied. Any other questions? Nope. Nope.